hello, beautiful and powerful women. Welcome to Susan Unleashed. This podcast is for any woman who wants to live a gorgeous life on her terms and who knows that not only is being a woman enough, it is the key to everything. I'm your host, Susan Elizabeth, certified professional coach, number one best-selling author, and Energy Leadership Index Master Practitioner. I fiercely support women who are passionate about elevating their lives while embracing their truest selves. Are you ready to unleash your power? Oprah said, it makes no difference in how many peaks you reach if there was no pleasure in the climb. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode, What the French Taught Me About Pleasure. I am so excited to share with all of you today my experience with learning about the art of pleasure and being a woman. And this all stems from my experience when I lived and worked in France, in Paris in particular, but I traveled all over France. And I am currently married to, and have been for a number of years, a Frenchman. So this gets reinforced in my life today. Okay, so way back when, I um, flew over to work and live in France, in Paris, and I you know, got to my apartment, and I settled in, and I couldn't wait to get out and get on the streets and start experiencing what this amazing city that I had studied about in my art classes and design classes, because I went to college for art and design school and you know, just the beautiful architecture, the pictures, all the things that we hear about, you know, and certainly the products that come our way, the beautiful handbags and shoes and clothes, you know, I'd look in the magazines. And so now I finally have arrived. I'm in Paris. First time in France, I could not wait to get out. So I went walking along the streets and immediately, immediately I noticed people just sauntering the streets, the windows and what was in the little shops were impeccable. They, the, the displays were just gorgeous, whether it was a boulangerie, a patisserie, even the butcher and, you know experiencing just walking down the street, lounging at a cafe. It was such a different culture than the culture that I came from. You know, the American culture, and I am not judging. This is not a judgment because I think all of our cultures and every culture has so many things to experience that are so good. And every culture has things that might could be challenging for some. So an American culture is a little bit more, um, you know, I came from a culture of like going through the drive throughs you know, eating and drinking in your car at times, um, ordering fast food carry out, um, you know, eating fast, um, you know, having conversations at Sunday dinners with family or in the evenings, but there was more of a fastness and a, like a, more of a quickness to the culture, the American culture that I, I just arrived out of and into the French culture. You know, when I was in, <laughs> I used to live in like sweatpants. I don't even own sweatpants anymore. Um, I own more like, I've migrated them over more towards like yoga clothing. It's for, for comfort. But I showed up in this completely different culture and nobody was in casual clothing. They had beautiful trousers or jeans or pants, beautiful shoes, beautiful handbags. Their hair was done, or if it wasn't like coiffed, it was it was done in a way that they knew how to work with their natural beauty. And everybody had this natural beauty to them. And they seemed to be really enjoying life. Um, people were hustling here and there, but people were sauntering. People were strolling. You'd see people outside in cafes and in conversations. And the windows and the windows that I would look in were just visually, they were beautiful. The displays, there was such care taken to visually set up the window displays. Did my light just, oh my gosh, my light just changed. That is so weird. 
I don't know what's going on. If you want to learn how to live a ripe, wild, and fierce lifestyle, make sure to check out my new course. It's in the show notes. So when you are finished with the podcast, head on over to the show notes and click on the link. Um, anyways, sorry, if, if all of you are watching this and not listening to this, my light that I have, I have a light ring. It just changed. So we're just going to keep going here. And back to what I was saying. So with the French, what I immediately noticed is people enjoying themselves. And I thought, hmm, this is going to be a fascinating experience. And it was the entire time I was there. So over time, is I would I couldn't wait on evenings or weekends when I wasn't working. I would leave my apartment and I would not come home till like late at night. I wanted to go out and experience everything there was. I would walk in parks. They had the most beautiful, beautiful parks, flowers, nature. I would walk up and down the streets and I would go through all the different arrondissements and I would go to all the different little spots, um, everything from the flea market in the north to, you know, the haute couture, to the little shops, to the artistic areas, just taking it all in. And here's what I noticed. The French prioritize pleasure. And I hadn't experienced that in my life and the way, maybe the way I was raised a little bit, but not really because I had experienced pleasure and relaxation, family vacations, summers on the lake at our summer home. But on a daily basis, I notice the French and especially French women really delighting and partaking in pleasure. It was in the way they walked. It was in the way they spoke. And even though I didn't, I arrived and I really didn't know any French, I had learned street French and the French language by the time I had left there. I noticed that the French make time for pleasure. They carve that out. They prioritize it. So that is my first my first idea and thought that I wanted to share with you is that with us in our life and our busy lives, because when I came back, it stayed with me my whole life, but I had forgotten quite a bit of that along the way as I was going up the corporate ladder, taking on more responsibility in my leadership positions, and... I had forgotten how to prioritize myself and prioritize pleasure. So this is probably the number one thing is really making time for and prioritizing pleasure in your life. What I do and what I've had to relearn is how to prioritize it, how to schedule it on my calendar every single day. And how I schedule my calendar is I have my corporate work calendar and then I have my personal calendar, which is um, which is full with my personal time, but then also my entrepreneurial time where I'm coaching and mentoring women. And I schedule in my my moments to myself. And I always put on my calendar, whether it's scheduling in pleasure time or not, I always put in the outcome or the results that I want, whether it's a meeting or it's just time for me. And that's important because every day, I will prioritize as I look at the week ahead and I look at the day ahead, I will make sure that I have time. Sometimes it's smaller amounts of time because I do have a lot on my plate, but I don't feel overwhelmed with it because I control my calendar. I control my life, but I bake in time to enjoy the little things that is life. It's the cup of tea in the afternoon, especially in winter. It's the coffee in the morning with It's the little piece of chocolate in the afternoon. It's maybe taking a walk outside for 15 minutes. Maybe it's even taking a bike ride for 45 minutes outside. I love to move my body and I love to be in my body. So these things get scheduled every day. There's time for my morning ritual. There's time for my evening ritual. There's time for my manicures, my pedicures, having my hair done, having facials, having massage, having spa time, having friend time. Just having time to go sit and be, I schedule that in as well. I schedule in time for my personal development. Everything gets scheduled on my calendar. And then I even schedule time where there's just nothing to do because I just know I want the organicness and I'm very intentional with my time. So coming back to the French and prioritizing pleasure, 
so important that you have to make time for it. And this is what the French do. And you have to focus on what pleases you. It's so interesting. Even to this day, my husband and I will have some differences of how we want to go about things here in our house. And I'll, I have more of a, what do you call, like, I want to go, like, I have an idea. I'm excited about it. I know my why, and I want to go do it. Well, he will also maybe go through the same process, but he's like, yeah, I'm going to get to it at whatever time. Or, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And I'm like, no, I want to do it now. So he's like, no, but I'm relaxing right now. You know, I want to have a coffee first. And I'm like, no, 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 hurry, 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 let's go. And I'm like, oh, I have to remember. There is no hurry. There's all the time that we need. Okay, let's do this. So I sit down and I relax and I... I enjoy the moment and I still get to go do what I want to do that I'm excited about. But really, really prioritizing this, I think that's the number one thing. Okay, so that's tip number one. Tip number two is really investigate and find out what pleases you. What brings you joy and pleasure? It could be anything. What makes you feel good and alive? So these are things like maybe it's a beautiful, maybe it's the way you dress. Maybe it's clothing. I know for me, I love to dress beautifully and clothing. That that I have pleasure in shopping for clothes, buying clothes, putting outfits together, designing my style. And I also know that I love to enjoy my morning cup of coffee my afternoon cup of tea, sometimes it's another coffee, decaf coffee, or it's that one little piece of chocolate. I know downtime for me, you know, just having moments of thinking time and being time is really important to me. That's what pleases me. Having time to go out and buy flowers. I love to be in nature. That is important to me and that brings me pleasure. It feels so good. Pleasure is are things that feel good. And why don't we want to feel good? Like make room for this in your lives. Every week we have fresh flowers in our home. Our gardens behind our house are gorgeous and we're right here in the middle of a big city. And these are important. It's it is so beautiful to be around pleasure in nature. And a beautiful glass of wine, whether it's a sauterne it's a white burgundy, it's a Bordeaux or a big red. I love just savoring and enjoying just conversations with my husband, going out with friends, enjoying wine, eating dinner out, cooking. You know, there's a lot of things that bring me pleasure. Also, I really, really enjoy, you know, how do I want to say this? Um, Having having time for myself and just taking care of my body, taking care of my mind, emotions, but really like decorating myself and honoring my beautiful body. You know, I'm in my 50s now, so I've really learned like I am so okay with my entire body. Anything that's whatever's got whatever I've going on, it's all good. You know, a little bit of cellulite here, a little bit of fat there little bit of whatever this is, some wrinkles here or there. I love my body. I have such acceptance of who I am and what my body is. And I make time to take care of myself. And that that is pleasure. So really, just stepping back, you know, music. I love music as well. That is very pleasurable. Like everything with the senses. So, you know, invest in your pleasure. Invest. When you find out what pleases you, invest in that. Not just make time for it, invest in it because the rewards are incredible. Like you get a big return on your investment. When you invest in your pleasure and you talk about it, you you spend time with it. Um, when you do that, it inspires you and it inspires others around you. So pleasure could be, you know, clothes, time, food, whatever that is. Find out what pleases you and invest in it. Okay, so something else about pleasure I want to share with you. My husband, so I was taking a shower one morning. So this is another little story on pleasure. And one of our cats loves to run into the shower and he starts licking the floor. 
Like he loves water. He likes to splash water from his water bowl. He likes to play in water and he likes to run in. And I'm like, no, no, get out, get out. Because then he leaves his little wet paws and he runs out. And I don't want anybody to slip if they're walking down the hallway from wet cat paws. If Because sometimes it's real, he gets really wet. He loves to even roll in the water. So my husband came in the bathroom after I opened the door and I was telling the cat, I'm like, stop that. And my husband said to me, he goes, don't tell him to stop. You're ripping him off of his pleasure. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is so French. I just had to stop and laugh because he viewed it from a whole different perspective. Like, why would you want to stop somebody else from having pleasure? And he's right. And I, in that moment, changed my whole perspective. I'm like, you know what? You can come right in the shower. You can roll in it. You can put your paws in it. You can lick the shower floor. Even if it's dirty, that's okay. You know, soap, scum, whatever that is. And it's okay. And have fun. So I just found it to be fascinating that still to this day, the little things that somebody like my husband will view the lens through about pleasure that I still try to do in my life. So it was just a beautiful reminder that even the little things that you don't even think of, like what brings somebody pleasure and what brings somebody joy. So another thing that I want to share with you is really being present in the moment. And this one was, excuse me, this one was, this one was a hard one to learn because for so many years, I... I had a lot of responsibility. I was always running, running, doing, doing, doing. And I had to learn how to come back to myself and be in the present moment. And I, I, my experience with living in France, the French culture and my husband is they're very present. When you're speaking, when you're sharing, there's this engagement, there's this connection. They're very present in the moment where in my mind, so many times I would be thinking, okay, what do I need to do? What are they saying to me so I can have an answer prepared? I need to be two steps ahead, three steps ahead. Preparedness. You know, what, what, what's this? What, what, do, what do I think about? It was just stopping that, getting out of my mind and just listening from my heart and enjoying the moment and being present in the moment. That, for me, that was hard to do. It's easy for me to prioritize pleasure. I've learned how to do that. It's easier for me to, it's easy for me to know what what pleases me and brings me pleasure and joy. But really being present in the moment, I, I still have to navigate that one at times. That one is, that one can be challenging for me. That is really being present. It's about slowing down. It's being present. It's listening. It's watching. It's savoring. Savoring your food. Savoring, visually savoring the beauty of the flowers, the beauty of nature, the beauty of architecture, the beauty of a conversation. It's really just savoring. I love that word savor. What if we all started savoring our lives more? And coming back to just being in the moment, like really there is nothing else but the moment. The past is no longer with us. The present isn't here yet. So really being in the moment, I notice that. And it allows, when you can really practice being in the moment, I can hear people better. I can listen better to the conversations. I actually can experience the conversation and have a conversation at a much deeper level. And when I'm present, I start noticing the little details around me. I notice more the smell of my food when I'm eating because I've slowed down. I'm savoring the moment. I know it's bringing me pleasure. I'm smelling it, I'm tasting it, the texture, the flavors, and I eat slower, I become full faster. And, you know, the visual around me, the little experiences around me as as I'm doing this are, are so beautiful, so beautiful. Okay, the other thing I would like to talk about is it's it's all about, pleasure is all about the senses, right? So it's the physical, 
It is feel. It's touch. You know, how, how does that silk scarf feel? How does my skin feel? How does my husband's skin feel? It's taste. It's sight. It's the look when somebody loves you so deeply and is looking into your eyes and touching that place in your soul. It's the sight of looking at a beautiful mountain. It's looking at whatever that is for you and the smell. So it's savoring. It's really allowing your senses to come out and noticing your senses. Ooh, I love this. It's savoring the chocolate. It's smelling the flowers. It's listening to the music. I always have music going because I love, it's one of the senses. It's so beautiful, whether it's, you know, classical music, jazz, blues, new age, modern, whatever it is, tango, whatever that is. I love to listen to music and it's being in your body as well. And being, listen, ladies, really being okay with your body. You are beautiful who you are. And really stepping into owning who you are, owning your body, loving your body and appreciating your body. I mean, we don't have to lose that five or 10 pounds to know that we're beautiful. That's not the answer. It's loving who you are now. And of course, you can always better yourself and take even better care of yourself if that's something you want to do. But I'm talking about living in your body, experiencing being in your body. Go dance. Dance naked at home if you want to. Put on the music and move your body. And, you know, that's really key is being in the moment, being with your sensual self and lighting candles. I love to light my candles because... It's a beautiful, beautiful mood. And I always say it's kind of like inviting spirit in. It's inviting the spiritual aspects in, in addition to beautiful. It's it's bathing. It's putting on my perfumes. It's decorating my body with makeup and jewelry and my clothing. It's my surroundings. Beauty is such a value to me. So my surroundings are just as important to me as how I show up for myself and my surrounding outside, inside. And the beauty and what I say and how I speak. Ah, and it's about, it's also about simplicity. You know, pleasure is also about, it's, it's removing the clutter from your life and getting clear on what brings you pleasure and living in elegance and simplicity. That is, is about pleasure. So let me share with you some statistics. So I was doing some research and I found out that about 37% of French women are in leadership and management positions compared to only about 29% of American women. And then I also knew that French, the French culture, French people spend about an hour and a half, maybe two hours a day on pleasurable things like dining and other things. But I, I also had learned, I knew that from experience that pleasure is a big part of the French culture, but I had also learned that the French spend twice as long as Americans on pleasurable things. So I'm just going to ask this question. If, if we can experience more pleasure as women, can we be more successful in our careers as women? I don't know. I found that I have become more successful when I have really stepped into being who I am, owning who I am, and bringing in that pleasure into my life, pleasure in having time for myself, pleasure in being around beauty, and pleasure in about experiencing things. If you want to learn how to live a ripe, wild, and fierce life, make sure that you check out my new course. When you're finished with the podcast, the link is in the show notes, so head on over to the link and check it out there. Interesting, right? Okay, are you with me? Okay, so let's even go a step step deeper here. I love this. When I was also in Paris, I I got to experience the beautiful lingerie shops and being fitted and properly fitted for my underpinnings. So if 
any of you have never had the experience of being properly fitted for your underpinnings, I highly recommend it. Highly. I had no idea that I was dressing myself all wrong. So when I had learned about that, that my life changed. I'm so much more comfortable, but I also feel so much more beautiful. And I really invest in my underpinnings. It is something that is for me. It's for my personal life. And it makes me feel so beautiful. That is what goes on underneath everything that I have. And it's how I begin my day. It's how I might sleep at night. It's how I might lounge around. It's what is a part of me. And I think as women, investing in this for ourselves will change your life. And cleaning out your drawers, throwing out the old things that are full of holes or that are not beautiful, that are not exquisite. Let's just just give that gift to yourself and, and do that process for yourself and go invest in that for yourself. So there is so much more that we can talk about, but I am I do that as a part of my private community and we go into a whole a whole thing around that. I'll just leave it at that. So yeah, that's a that is a beautiful beautiful expression that we get to do as women and it is such a a joy and it's so gorgeous and it's it's a beautiful thing that we get to do it for ourselves. So with that said, I just want to come back to one more story about France. So my husband and I also like to travel a lot to France. We take vacations there. He still visits his family there. And there was a moment when we were strolling down the street and I wanted to go into the patisserie and get a little piece of chocolate. And just when you walk in, like I love Lottere. If you haven't had their macaroons, they're amazing. They're exquisite. And but just the little patisseries, like the chocolate shops, the sweet shops, and just having one. And I remember, you know, many, many years ago, you know, I would go in and I would order several of these because I was so excited and I would get out and I would eat them and I would have them and I would sit outside of the little patisserie at the little table, kind of like cafe style. And I would watch the people and you know, I, I would look to my left and to my right, observing the other patrons sitting outside, and they would have just one on a little plate, just one. And they literally, the French woman would literally take little nibbles and put it down, and they would look at it, and they would admire it, and they would allow the taste to just melt in their mouth. Meanwhile, I had just finished two of them, and I was looking at my third and fourth one, and I thought, hmm, I'm going to slow down. And in just coming back to the experience of savoring, and, and the French do this so, so well. They really enjoy, and they don't overindulge. They experience the little pleasures, and they just take little bites. It's little bits, and they have such an amazing experience with that, and they, they just enjoy life. They enjoy the little things and they treat themselves. So that way they're not denying themselves of pleasure. They're giving it to them, but they're not overindulging. Do you see where I'm going with this? So I savored those last two for probably an hour. And then after that, when I would go into patisseries, I would buy one thing and I would sit outside for about an hour and then I would eat it and experience it or have my coffee or my little espresso with it. And... Oh, so many stories to share about the French culture and French life, we, you know, with shopping and going in and just, you know, being treated with such service and, um, you know, like high value, like really honoring the feminine. I really, really learned how to honor the feminine Well, I can't wait to share with you. Well, a lot of teachings around really valuing yourself as a high value woman in the feminine, but just to close up about pleasure, um, I think just going back and really, you know, schedule time for pleasure in your life. Find out what pleases you. Make time for that. Make room for that. Make space for that. Delight in your senses. You know, experiencing all of the things that please your senses. And being present in the moment. 
Okay, everybody, that's it for now on Pleasure. We're going to do more on Pleasure, and we do a lot of that inside the community, and I so look forward to our next episode, but that's it for Day and Pleasure. Please go out over this next week and look for what pleases you. Schedule that in. No kidding. Go do that for yourselves on your calendar. Start making the tiny little changes that will bring you pleasure and you just might have more success in your life and more joy in your life. Okay, everybody. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would leave me a review or share it with someone else who may enjoy it too. To stay connected with me, please head on over to SusanElizabethCoaching.com and make sure that you sign up for my tips on how to live an unleashed life full of passion and purpose. Until next time, go live an unleashed life.